we're introducing our crochet inspired embroidery. Part of the discovery was that we had to figure out how to wash the water soluble stabilizer out of the embroidery. I stitched my embroidery on water soluble stabilizer and I've used two layers of it. And it's really important to use two layers. You need that extra stability. Part of the problem with this stabilizer is that it is a PVC product. It's not starch, it's not you know anything other than a PVC product. I'm sure there's other things in it. When we started this uh, process, that was the biggest hurdle to actually get the pieces soft because the PVC stayed within the embroidery. When you stitch, it actually captures the stabilizer in between the stitches and it will stay there unless you know how to actually get it out. So I'm just cutting these out and I like to cut it out on a kind of a straight line. You can use a smaller rotary if you like. This um, big one works just fine for me, but you want to use what you're comfortable with. And don't get too close. This is what the piece is like when it's cut out. You can see how stiff it is. It needs to be that stiff so that the stitches will actually go where they're supposed to go and lock it all together. So if it wasn't really accurate, it would kind of fall apart on you. And this is what the piece is like when it's washed and it's soft and it's just, I mean, it's luscious. I, I love the feel of these pieces. And you want to make sure that as much of the stabilizer is out of the piece so that it actually handles correctly. So we want to go ahead and cut all the pieces apart and we'll rinse them in clear water. We actually have a water softener, so if you have one of those, it's great. If you don't, you might have to rinse it just a little bit more. I want to talk about this, this uh, washing technique, and it's really, really important that you follow it exactly as we have explained it. Both Neil and I have spent hours and hours of stitching things and then washing and we've wrecked them. So we've done all the experimenting. You don't need to be doing any of that. We only use water. We use no solvents, we use no soaps, no vinegar, nothing else but water. And it just works the best. If you put any of those things in, it actually disintegrates the fibers on the threads. It makes them rough and they aren't as shiny and you just don't want that. So absolutely no soap, no solvents, nothing but pure water. What we've also found is that you cannot mix up the actual colors. So if you're working with beige, you need to wash them separately, just like your clothes. If you're working with a blue one and a, and a beige one, you're going to end up discoloring it. A lot of people think that everything is color fast, and in, in most cases it is but you still get residue off of it if you mix the colors, just like your clothes. So you wanna be careful to keep all the same colors and wash the same colors together. All right, we're gonna move on to the rinsing process. 
Okay, we're, we're pre-washing all of the pieces now. We have a bowl underneath and the strainer on top. And we want to fill the, the um, bowl up with water. And I'm going to let it just get a, a little bit in, and I'm going to start putting it in just one at a time. And you can see that it just disappears. So if, if you have any problems with, um, you know, any kind of sensitivity to your hands, you can wear gloves. It's not really necessary, but, you, you know, everybody has to make those kind of decisions. Now, there's a lot of water soluble um, in that water. So that's why we put the strainer in it, is to get rid of that. You want to make sure that you're using hot water. Now, it's not so hot that my hands can would get burnt. Um, Neil does this for me. I don't really ever wash these. Um, and he can use hotter water than I can, which is helpful. Okay, now if you're ma making one of those sculptures, I think they, they actually did houses and stuff with this kind of freestanding lace. And they would just rinse it out <coughs> and leave it stiff. And we certainly aren't doing that at this point. We're, we're wanting it to be really soft. My hands get really gooey. It's uh, very sticky when it's wet. All right, so I'm just swishing them around because it gets caught in between the layers. So you want to go ahead and do that, and we're straining it out. And I'm going to set it aside. We've stopped the water. I wanted to show you how it's actually sitting on the side, and it feels just like glue, and you can see how much is sitting there. And that's what's inside your piece at, right now, and it's actually more intense than that. It's very, very sticky, and that's the stuff we want to get out. And it's, it's not, it helps you in the stitching process, but it doesn't help you at all if, if you want the piece to be soft. Okay, we're filling the bowl back up with water, and you want to agitate it as you're going so it gets out of the actual pieces. And we're using hot water. Now, in the instructions that the manufacturer says that it's dissolvable with warm water, cold water, uh, it's dissolvable, but it doesn't uh, actually get rid of it. So you've got to use hot water with this. Your rayon is really strong, so you don't need to worry about the hot water with it. And if you're using polyester, you don't need to worry at all with that. So we want to go ahead and rinse it, and I'm going to pull it out and change the water. and start again. And this will do three to four times. And I'm turning them over so that um, it, the bottom ones will actually, the stuff will land in there. So we want to turn it over and, you know, kind of manipulate it. Can you see how it makes bubbles? Um, when it makes bubbles, that means that the um, PVC product is still in there. Just like making blowing bubbles, um, it's, it's there and it holds that water together. So you can, you can tell normally if it were really clean, it would not do that. Okay, this is a piece that's been cleaned. And one thing that happens, just so you know, which is really a good thing, is that uh, rayon gets stiff when it's wet, which is fabulous. Uh, polyester is just polyester, but it's fabulous. Well, this is holding together really well. But it's not sticking. You can see how it's not sticking right there. It just kind of flows through it, not like the, the actual pieces here. That when it, it, you can definitely see a difference. So once you have your um, 
your pieces. You know, I was when I was doing this the first time, I was shocked that the rayon was so stiff. I didn't know that it did that when it got wet. So um, it's a good thing that we actually showed you so you're not worried about it. So let's go ahead and rinse this again. Now, in uh, most cases, the people that work with freestanding lace um, seem to leave all of the glue in there. And, and they're fine with it. It depends on what you're making. If you're doing bookmarks or doilies, it's, it's no problem whatsoever, but that's not what we're doing. We want to wash it until it's ready uh, to go into the next step. This is the fourth one. And at this point, I'm just going to turn just the hot water because I'm not going to mess with it with my hands. You can keep washing this and washing this, but there, the water soluble, the, the, what's left, is embedded inside the actual stitching. No more will come out. Um, and so we want to move on to the next step. Now, I don't want you to freak out. I want to stress that this is very safe for our embroidery very, very safe. So what causes it to not be is using soaps or any other kind of baking soda any or vinegar, any of that is what makes it unsafe. The rayon is perfectly fine doing it. You are not going to hurt it. Back in the 70s, they had what is called boiled t-shirts or boiled shirts, and they were very, very popular. And why they were so popular is that the fabric would become almost suede. It was just wonderful to have all the chemicals out, everything from the shirts and the t-shirts. And it was also, a boiling technique was also used in the Victorian times to get their clothing very bright white because it, it actually moves the oils or any of foreign matter out of the fabrics. So we're going to move on to the crock pot. Now there's many things on the crock pot that you need to understand. We have a timed one, which uh, you can actually set the timing on that. It's one of the brand new ones, but if you don't have a timer, you need to set a timer on your phone because you do not want to go over the three to four hours. And I know that seems like a long time, but it's a crock pot. You're not doing anything but putting it in the crock pot and turning it on. We run the crock pot on low, and that is very, very low. So you want to make sure that you use the low setting, set it for a timer. We usually go four hours with our stuff, but anywhere between three and four hours, you're fine because every crock pot kind of has a different temperature. So you want to be really careful with that. Also, you want to get, this is a silicone grid because the, the thing that caused most of the problems when we started doing this process is that the lace would actually set next to the heating element. That meant that some of the lace would get hotter than the others. So you want to use a grid, and it, it's very important to use a grid. So that actually keeps the heat up and keeps it more consistent throughout all the pieces. You want to put that in, and we're going to fill it up with water, but you can put the pieces in now if you want. I want for you to understand also, there's a couple of things that'll happen. If you're working on a piece and your tensions aren't right, if the bobbin is too tight or the top is too tight, it really depends on what it is, but mostly we found it was the bobbin that was too tight, the tension was too tight, it would do what we call spidering, which means it curls up like this, like a dead spider. So you wanna make sure that if you're having that kind of a problem, we are going to do a specific video on how to make sure your tensions are set absolutely correct for this process. And it's really, really easy. You know, I've been sewing my whole life. I can't remember not sewing, quite frankly. And when uh, we actually ran into problems with the pieces that they weren't laying at, like I wanted it, and we had to figure out what the problem was. And we had a which I've had for years, a Tola gauge. And I thought, no, this can't be that easy. I've never used a Tola gauge ever. I thought my ego got in, involved and I thought I knew everything. But boy, I didn't know anything until I got that Tola gauge. So we'll, we'll do a special video on that. 
that you want to make sure your tensions are correct. Also, as I'm playing with this, my hands are so sticky. It's just, and that'll make you really understand how it's still in there. It's, it's crazy. And that was a lot of rinsing. And that it's just, I'm stuck together here. We've got, it's a, a grid and it holds things up. Most of you that cook understand what it is. It's so that things will circulate properly. So you want to make sure that you have the grid. And I really recommend it. You can get a really, really cheap one on Amazon for almost nothing. And it makes a huge difference in, in allowing the water to actually circulate. Because this stuff, this glue, will sit on the, the top, on the bottom, wherever, but it's not circulating if the pieces are directly on the heat. And it also distorts the uh, color if they get way too hot, if it's right down on the bottom. So you want to be really careful with that. And it just, it's a simple solution. It's very, very simple. Just the silicone grid. It's kind of lasagna, you know? I don't cook at all. Neil does all the cooking because I'm really, <laughs> I'm no good at it at all. I used to be, but not now. But anyway, this is as close as I get. See how this is curling right here? Well, part of the actual digitizing is that I stitch down the fringe on the bottom so it won't go all over the place. And this will be removed when you get ready to, to sew it. But if you have pieces that are kind of kinked up like that, you want to turn them over and lay them flat so that it won't be permanently kinked. It's just a real simple process. See how this is kinked like that? Just turn it the other, the other way. If you have these small pieces like this, if you've, if you've got a tension problem, they will actually curl like, like a dead spider. So you want to make sure that if that happens, you want to make sure your bobbin tension is, is corrected. Okay, you want to fill it up with water. Now, with the water, you can also heat it up with your tea kettle if you want to speed up the actual heating process. I know that Neil does that now, so you, you can also do that. The four hours, you're not doing anything, but the crock pot is. So you can go do all sorts of other things with your life. And with the regulated ones, you can act, it will actually turn it off. So you're, you're not really locked in. But what is locked in is the four times. It makes a big difference. And Neil and I fought with this. You know, we didn't fight each other. We fought with it because that is a big commitment on your part to actually do it. So we kept trying to back it out, kept trying to back it out, and I, I'd end up having to do it again. And it was always the third time, and then when it went to the fourth time, the pieces are exactly what they need to be. Now you want the, the, the true three to four hours on low, and then just go about your life and then come back and take care of it. You wanna go ahead and fill this up. We're doing the, the first batch, the first rotation and fill it up with your hot water and give it that four hours. And it's really important. So trust me, do it the four hours. If you don't trust me, do it the three and see the difference. I mean, it really, really makes a huge difference. And I want people to question, like just like we do, we question it all the time, what do we have to do? And there is no other way. We have done everything. We've bought soaps, we've bought everything. This is the only way to get it out. We've just filled the crock pot and we wanted you to see the film that's created on top. After all that washing and all that swishing around, you can still see what's on top. And that's just a minute amount of what's inside the actual pieces. After each process, you'll actually see on top that there's a slick across the top and it looks like an oil slick technically. So you know that that stuff is still in there. And it just takes a little time to get all of this stuff out. It just And it makes such a difference with the pieces. Go ahead and set the timer. Remember, four hours is optimum. We're going to do this four times and set it at low. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am Neil. I'm Sharon's son. I am going to walk you through the last part of rinsing out your new embroidery pieces. This has become a little bit too dangerous for Sharon to do because her hand strength hasn't kept up. 
in the last few years and this is very hot. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the crock pot. We're gonna bring it over to the sink. I'm gonna simply walk you through how I've been washing thousands and thousands of pieces that Sharon has stitched out over the last year. And then we're gonna just go ahead and refill the crock pot, give you some tips and things that I've ran into. And then uh, we'll close out the video and go on from there. Okay, when you're pulling the pot out of the crock pot, it's gonna be very hot. So just make sure you've got something on your hands to keep them from getting burnt. I, I have done it a few times with the water splashing around. Once you get used to it, it, it becomes pretty simple. So it's not really too much of a problem. Now we are over here at the sink and I am going to start running the cold water. I like to do that just so it kind of starts to cool the water down a little bit and it doesn't burn me. So we're just gonna take it out. We're gonna slowly dip it out without dropping any of the embroidered pieces into the sink. I have taken a perforated drain from the non-garbage disposal sink and I've stuck it in the garbage disposal, but you can do this whatever way you feel comfortable. So just gonna drain it out. So and don't worry about that wound on my arm. Sharon just got mad at me the other day and came at me with a knife. So we're just gonna fill it up with uh, some cold water to cool down the, the vessel and everything so we can handle it by hand. And then we'll drain that out and we'll fill it up with some hot water and we'll do some agitating We'll do that cycle through a couple times, make sure we're getting as much out as we can. And then we'll go back, fill it all the way back up with hot water and put it back on to cook for the second rotate, the second four hour rotation. Okay, just cooling it down a bit so I can handle it by hand. Okay, we're good. Let's go ahead and drain it out. hot water in there. Okay. We can already start to feel, even when it's wet, how pliable they're starting to become, even just after their first cook. So it's already starting to feel like the foundation is leaving. What, what I believe is the important thing here is just the time and the heat, and that's what really is doing the work. And I think that's why nobody's, been, nobody's done this before. They just never invested enough time and heat to get the water soluble out of whatever it is they embroidered it with. So we'll go, go ahead and rinse it out a couple more times. And then that will be it. Go ahead and drain it. We'll fill it back up with hot water and then we'll get it back on the cook. And you'll follow this process each time. It's the exact same thing, so we're not gonna show it again. So we'll be back in a few minutes and then we'll go back over to the other station. Okay, we've just finished our first heat cycle of four hours. We've gone through a rinsing cycle again. We did you know, three or four rinses. Rinse out the pot, made sure there had fresh, clean water in it. And we got it filled back up. We're about an inch below the top of the pot, but you can just fill it up to wherever you feel comfortable. Now, if your crock pot doesn't seem to be getting hot enough on low, you can try turning it up to high for a short while to get the overall temperature higher and then turn it back to low. If you don't feel like you're getting it high enough for the whole four hour cycle, put it on high, try to avoid anything more than a very, very light simmer. If it begins to boil rapidly, you gotta turn it back down. It's just, it's too hot. Um, our concerns are that it's gonna damage the threads, 
we really haven't had any problem when ours has done that by accident, but it is a concern that we want to pass on and make sure that you're aware of. Um, if it could be old, dry, brittle thread, adding that much heat could damage it, I would, I would expect. So you wanna do this cycle four times. Each cycle is gonna be a four hour block of heat. Keep it from boiling, low simmer at the highest. We use low on our crock pot, but every crock pot is different. And then once you go through that whole cycle, you just lay them out on a terry cloth towel and let them dry. We like to put a fan on ours so that it is blowing across it, just so it dries it quicker, so Sharon can take it and do what she needs. Usually it only takes about an hour or two for them to dry completely to where they're nice and flexible and malleable the way that we like them. If you have any questions, just post them in the comment section or you can reach us through our website, www.sharonshammer.com and email us from the contact us section.